Hey guys, another dev here. Welcome to How to Make a Game Like Blade Ball Part 3. Today's video, unfortunately, is very short and it's a few changes. Um, first of all, the ball is different colors depending on who's looking. <coughs> the ball will appear red to the person who is being targeted, but it will appear white to everybody else. So you can see it's white for the non-target, but it is red for the target. Also, as you just saw, the ball will not kill both players now. It'll only kill the target. So you can see, even though it, ex it technically explodes both of us, only the target will die. Oh, and I also forgot to mention that for the first round of choosing a person to target, instead of the ball targeting the closest player, it targets a random player, because that's how it is in the original game. It will target somebody at random. Anyway, I hope you enjoy this quick video. I'm sorry it took so long. Long. and this isn't the blocking system i know you guys have been waiting for that that is coming soon so yeah let's get right into it all right so the first thing we're going to change is we're going to make it so you can't reset your character start a gui we're going to add in a local script we can go ahead and rename it to disable reset in the script which is going to be very simple so we're going to start by getting starter gui so local starter gui is equal to game colon get service starter gui we're just going to wait a tick and then we're going to get started gui colon set core and then reset button call back make sure that you write it exactly like this comma false basically disabling the reset button so we can go ahead and try it and if you go here you can see that the reset character um button is blocked out i cannot click it so before we move on to the next thing in replicated storage we can go ahead and add in a folder which we can rename to remote events inside this folder we can add in a remote event and we can go ahead and name it to ball color so later, we're going to make the ball change color depending on if you're the target or not. So if the ball is after you, it will appear red for you, but for everybody else, it will appear white on their screens. Now we can go ahead and open up our ball handler script, and we are going to create a variable for the event we just created. So right after local game active, we're going to do local ball color event is equal to replicated storage dot remote events dot ball color. Before we actually get into changing the ball color though we're going to do a few things first first of all in the highlight players function we can go ahead and delete these three lines right here so we can just go ahead and delete these we don't need those lines because those same lines are here in the reset function all right so now down to our spawn ball function first of all somebody pointed out that the ball does actually kill the player the explosion does and depending on this avatar you have that explosion won't always kill you and also the explosion shouldn't have have collateral damage it is only supposed to kill the player that it hit so to fix this we can change blast radius to zero and blast pressure to zero as well and then that we can go down a line and we can do hit dot parent dot humanoid dot health is equal to zero so this will basically kill the player that it hit but we only want to kill them if the player it hit was the target player and not some other player in the way so to make sure they're the target player right after clone ball dot touch colon connect function we're going to go down two lines and we're just going to write if game dot players colon get player from character hit dot parent so we're getting the player instance that the ball hit and we're checking if it equals target player then we need to move everything here into that little if statement so we can just go ahead and cut all of this right here and paste it here and that should be good also another change that needs to be made when the ball spawns in, it's not supposed to look for the nearest player. It is supposed to get a random player. So under the find nearest player function, we're going to create another function. We're going to call it local function. We're going to call it find random player. And we're not going to delete the find nearest player function because we might need it later. So we're going to start by creating a table called valid players. So local valid players is equal to pointy brackets. And then we're going to go through a for loop of all the players in the game. So for i comma player in pairs game dot players colon get children do. We're going to check if they have the in game value inside of them. So local in game is equal to player colon find first child in game if they do have this value so if in game then we're going to insert them into the valid players table so we can do table dot insert valid player comma player also i misspelled valid players 
it should be have an s at the end so i'm going to fix that so outside of this for loop here we're going to do if hashtag valid players so we're getting the number of players in this table is greater than one then we are going to pick one of the players in the valid player table and that is going to be our target so local random number is equal to math dot random one comma hashtag valid players so we're getting a random number between one and the amount of valid players in the table and we're just going to do target player is equal to valid players square brackets random number so we're setting the target to be the randomly picked player and then back in your spawn ball function instead of calling find nearest player we're going to remove that and we're just going to call find random player instead now that is all for the changes now let's go ahead and change the ball color depending on if you're the target or not so to do this in our ball handler script still we're going to go to our highlight players function and then after this if statement here we're going to go down the line and we're just going to do ball color events colon fire all clients and we're going to fire the target player. So we're calling the remote event that we created earlier and we're sending over the target player. So that's it for the server side of things. Now we need the client side. So in starter GUI, we're going to add in another local script and this one shall be named ball color changer. And we're gonna establish a few variables. So for one, we're going to get replicated storage. So local replicated storage is equal to game colon get service replicated storage and we're going to get the ball color event inside of it so local ball color event is equal to replicated storage dot remote events dot ball color and lastly we're going to get the player so local player is equal to game dot players dot local player so now we're going to create a function whenever the ball color event is fired so ball color event dot on client event and connect function and we're going to establish a parameter called target so basically the server is sending the target player from this script over to this script if that makes sense so we're getting the target player that we sent over from our ball handler script so we're going to establish a variable for the ball so local ball is equal to nil then we're going to say repeat and then we go down and you can see an until immediately pops up we're just going to add in until ball is not equal to nil and inside of this repeat we're going to do ball is equal to workspace colon find first child quotation marks ball make sure you spell ball exactly the same as how you spelt it in server storage as you can see here in server storage it is spelt ball exactly the same as i spelt it here and it is case sensitive if you have anything else in workspace named ball you should probably name it something else or move it into a folder or something because the script might break and then after this we're going to add in a wait the reason we establish the ball in the repeat loop instead of doing Doing local ball is equal to workspace colon find first child ball which would be way simpler is because for some reason when the script fires if we immediately say local ball equals workspace colon find first child ball it always returns nil and i can't figure out why i don't know i might be stupid but this way works for me so anyway after the repeat we're going to do if ball then we're going to check if the player is equal to the target so if player is equal equal to target then so if the player is being targeted we're going to make the ball color red so we can do ball dot color is equal to color three dot from rgb and we're just going to do 255 comma zero comma zero which will just make a red color and we're going to do else so if the player is not the target we can do ball dot color is equal to color three dot from rgb 255 comma 255 comma 255 and this will make a white color so if the player is the target the ball color will be red if not the ball will look white for the player and that should be everything completed and working so we can just go ahead open up the test tab and start a test world with two players so once the game starts um you can see that it chooses a random player and the ball was different colors for both of both of us so you can see the ball appears red for the target but it appears white for the person looking i'm not sure if you caught it it's pretty hard to see from that far and also if the ball were to explode both of us at the same time only the target should die
Yep, you can see the target died. The other player is still alive. And that is how it is in the original, I believe. Anyways, that's it for this video. I really hope you enjoyed. I'm sorry this video took so long and that it is so short and nothing new. It's just changes. Next video should be the blade system. Finally, I know you guys have been waiting for that. So yeah, hope you enjoyed. See you guys in the next one. Bye.